I just wanted to first off thank you all um, for coming here and for honoring this amazing woman who is so special to all of us. And I feel very honored to be a part of this, um, having not been born into this family, but having come in through marriage and getting to have grandma as my grandma um, for the past seven years um, has been really amazing. So, um, so welcome. We're gonna start by opening with the lighting of the Yazrit candle. Um, and Beth is going to recite the Yazrit prayer, which is the commemoration of the death of a Jew by a mourner, um, the child, sibling, spouse, or parent of the deceased. So Beth, if you want to go ahead and... Um... Zakhar Tzadik Lerachach. The memory of the upright is a source of blessing. Uh, so the prayer on the kindling of a Yazrit lamp is the eternal rock of ages. In hushed reverence, I kindle this memorial lamp in loving remembrance on this anniversary of my loved one's death. We have been taught that human souls are thy candles. Through them, thou bringest light into the world. For the light of compassion and tenderness, which my loved one brought into my life. I am everlastingly grateful. Help me, O oh God, to use the sacred memory of my loved one noble spur to consecrated living. May I perpetuate and transmit everything that was beautiful and loving about my loved one's character. Keep firm my faith that we cannot go where you are not and where you are, all is well. Amen. And now, Sam, um, you have a memory to share about Sam? All right, I got it right here. Some of my happiest memories as a child were taking the annual trip to Arizona. I was always so excited to see Grandma, Pop Pop, Aunt Shockey, Uncle Howard, Aunt Robin, Matthew, and Jason. We could always count on a long weekend. Playing in the huge backyard, sneaking around the house, playing 007, getting stom and getting stomach aches from eating too many sweets from the never-ending pantry. Grandma was the fun grandparent who never hesitated to do anything in her power to make it the best visit for us as kids. But that was the kind of woman Grandma was, always thinking of others before herself. Grandma was the most selfless person I've ever met. I'm so happy to have known her while I became an adult. She would always ask about my life and what's going on and be genuinely interested about it. I'm so grateful to have known her and she was a role model for me on how to live my life. I miss her and thank you for her often. She will always be with me in my heart and I hope I can continue to live my life by the example she set. I love you, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. That was beautiful. Now we're going to go on to the reading of the Mourner's Kaddish, which Robert is going to read for us. The Kaddish is not a prayer about death. In fact, the Mourner's Kaddish does not mention death at all, but instead praises God. It is an affirmation of life and our faith in God. It reaffirms the mourner's relationship with God and God's will in this world. Part of that will is, was the welcoming home of Gladys Kessler. All right, I am gonna read the first sentence in Hebrew and then the rest in, and then it, the whole prayer in English. Yishkedal v'yishkedash shemei rabah. May the great name of God be exalted and sanctified throughout the world, which he has created according to his will. May his kingship be established in your lifetime and in your days, and in the lifetime of the entire household of Israel, swiftly and in the near future. Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, honored, elevated, and lauded be the the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he above and beyond any blessings and hymns, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world. Amen. May there be an abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. He who makes peace in his holy, high holy places may he bring peace upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. Thank you. 
Um, so now, Matthew, uh, if you would like to share what you wrote about grandma and your, your memories. Um, so I just, I just wanted to share um, <laughs> some, a couple like fun memories that I had with her. Um, so grandma and I, um, we always seem to have bonded over food. <laughs> um, many of my favorite memories with her uh, were my birthdays. She would always call me up like a few days before and we'd schedule a time to get together and we'd inevitably always go to Denny's. <laughs> and if you've, if you've been to dinner with grandma alone, it's different than with a big group of people because she's hilarious. And um, we would always, people watch and laugh and she was always watching other people constantly. You couldn't get through a meal without her commenting on the cute couple in the back or you know the funny looking guy in the booth next door or something like that. <laughs> So, um, you know, and another thing was whenever we would be at these restaurants, the waiters and waitresses would always just kind of flock to our table. You know, they would want to sit and actually talk with us. And that's because grandma was that person. Everyone wanted to talk to her and everyone wanted to know more about her. And she was always so sweet and calm and nice. And yeah, everyone loved her. Um, and then another fun story I wanted to share, because <laughs> You never really saw grandma get frustrated very often. And I remember the very, one of the very few times I, she actually got frustrated with me. It was really funny. Um, uh, I think I just turned six or seven. Um, and this was when we would fly to California every summer to visit. Um, she was trying to get us on the pre-boarding section of the flight. Uh, while she was trying to convince the concierge uh, at the terminal, she was insisting that I was five and young enough for us to pre-board. She was insistent on it. Well, me, I'm a proud like six or seven year old and March was my birthday, which means, you know, summer was just a couple months later. So I was happy to be my age. So I heard her saying that and I yelled, I was like, no grandma, I just turned seven. <laughs> and grandma's face just dropped and she told me to shut up. <laughs> Uh, needless to say, we didn't get to pre-board that flight, but it was, it was like a memory that like stuck out with me forever. And I'll always remember that because it was just a really funny moment. Mm -hmm. I just miss her a lot. So. Thank you. Um, Sarah, uh, do you have something that you'd like to share? So I remember meeting Grandma Gladys for the first time at Starbucks and it was after one of my dance classes so I'm coming in all disheveled in my opinion and I'm like sweaty and not just like not presentable and I was totally caught off guard I was not expecting to meet Aunt Beth and Grandma Gladys so like at a moment of like oh my god but you guys made me feel so welcomed and you know Grandma Gladys has always kind of had that presence like immediately when you meet her like I mean like you said like with people at the restaurant and stuff just everybody gravitating towards her. And um, she was always so welcoming. And even shortly after um, she hugged and kissed me, like I was her own granddaughter, like shortly after that, when I would see her and the family. Um, and before Matt and I were even very far into our relationship, I remember her pulling me aside and telling me that she hopes we end up together and that we get married and she just made me feel very loved and part of the family um, which others within the family did too but there was just something special about her and the way that she would just be so welcoming and loving and um i also um always felt around like every holiday at the gerber house i would always gravitate towards her like i would always sit near her and talk to her and like she was just kind of my sidekick every time i'd go over there and we'd always be chatting and sitting together and um she always laugh about we would always laugh about how like loud everybody would be or if there was like one of those classic holiday situations where people are arguing <laughs> like she just made light of like every situation and um she was just really adorable and always a warm place and a safe place for me. And I'll really, really miss that. I love her very much. So, yeah. So now we are going to move on to the reading of the Shema prayer. And Jason is going to do that for us. Um, or sorry, the Shema. The Shema prayer is the most essential prayer 
in all of Judaism, an affirmation of God's singularity and kingship. Okay, so I'll do the first line in Hebrew, and uh, then I'll do the rest, the whole thing in English. <clears throat> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and you shall speak of them when you sit at home and when you walk along the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the door posts of your house and on your gates. And it shall come to pass if you surely listen to the commandments that I command you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and soul that I will give rain to your land, the early and the late rains, that you may gather in your grain, your wine and your oil. And I will give grass in your fields for your cattle and you will eat and you will be satisfied. In order to prolong your days and the days of your children on the land, the Lord promised your fathers that he would give them as long as the days that the heavens are over the earth. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God who led you from the land of Egypt to be a God to you. I am the Lord your God. Mom, you have a uh, something that you'd like to share about Grandma? I remember the first time I met Mom. It was the first time Howard took me home to meet the parents. She was so welcoming and kind, and I don't remember if she hugged me hello, but by the end of the evening, I think I was family, and she definitely hugged me goodbye. She was like that with everyone, ready to give a hug and a kind word. Once Howard and I were married, she never treated me any less than a daughter. We loved doing things together. I introduced her to Mexican food. She always told me that she didn't like Mexican food, but I said she just didn't know what to order. We went and had chicken fajitas the first time with chips and salsa. She loved it. She would often call me up wanting to go to lunch so she could have chicken fajitas. She loved going to the movies, and after Aunt Chalky passed, we would try to catch movies from time to time. When she got sick, I would go over and sit with her to watch the game show channel. Her favorite show was America Says. I tried to introduce her to other shows, but she didn't want to miss her game shows. I did not know any Jewish foods when I came in the family other than bagels. And she would make these great dishes and I would say, I just have to have the recipe. And so, but instead of just giving me the recipe, she would actually show me how to make things. And so she showed me how to make potato latkes and kegel. And so I so appreciated that she took the time and the effort to show me how to cook these great foods. As you guys all know, she loved birthdays. She would always make the biggest effort to celebrate everyone's birthday. She would get the cake. She would always, and she would always get the kind that everyone liked. You know, if somebody liked chocolate, they got chocolate. They liked vanilla, they got vanilla. And of course, we would always play along she would hide the kick. And then we, she'd bring the kick out and we'd all yell, surprise. We all knew it was coming, but we had to because she just thought that was, she just thought that was a, a kick. She loved her family and she was willing to do anything for her family. She babysat Jason and Matthew as well as Sam and Megan many times. She did not find it an inconvenience. As a matter of fact, she would go out of her way to make sure that her family was well cared for. At family dinners, she would try to make sure that everyone had something they liked, whether it was their favorite dessert or even their favorite vegetable. Mom was such an avid reader. She was amazed by the computer. I started to order her books for her from the library online. She was fascinated by this. We would sit together and I would place hold for all the books that she wanted to read. When she was still driving, she would then go to the library and pick them up herself. She made sure she, she would then call me and make sure that I would know she picked up the books. And after a while, I started picking them up for her. 
she really loved to read, and she made me this promise that if something should ever happen to her, I had to make sure that I returned her library books. And I'm going to tell you, that was one of the first things I did, is I returned all of her library books. Um, I miss our time together, sitting and talking, watching TV, or even just reading together. I'm fortunate to call her mom. Thank you. That was beautiful. All right. Um, so Dad Howard is going to read the Kriya prayer. The Kriya is a Hebrew word meaning tearing. It refers to the act of tearing one's clothes or cutting a black ribbon worn on one's clothes. This rending is a striking expression of grief and anger at the loss of a loved one. I'll read it in Hebrew. And then I'll read the English. It's very short. Baruch Atah Eloheinu Melech Olam Dayan Haemet. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, the true judge. Okay, Megan, do you have something to share about Grandma? Okay, um, I wrote something. Okay, how, how do you write the right words for someone you knew your whole life? All the hellos, all the goodbyes, all the hugs, all the conversations, all the laughs, all the tears, all the joys, the time spent sitting side by side, times where we would sit quietly in a room, the pickups from the airport, the family holidays, the excessive gift giving, but most importantly, all the love. How do you put all those into words and emotion? How do you put all those words and emotions into words? You don't because simply you can't. It's a feeling, a feeling that you take everywhere with you, a feeling that you grew up with, a feeling gifted to you, the comfort of another human being loving you endlessly and unconditionally. My grandmother was smart, witty, judgeless, beyond kind, courageous, loving, joyful, and peaceful. She would never let you go unheard. She would never let you alone. She would ne never let you feel unloved. And she would never leave a kitchen dirty, and she never had no candy. <laughs> Grandma was the most kind soul and a young soul. I no longer feel like she's gone because I feel her everywhere I go. She is always with us. I love you, Grandma. Thank you for all the things that you have taught me. And most importantly, thank you for the life you gave me. That was beautiful. Matthew, would you read the poem, If Flowers Grow in Heaven? Okay. It's a really nice poem. If flowers grew in heaven, Lord, then pick a bunch for me. Then place them in grandma's arm, in my grandmom's arms and tell them they're from me. Tell her that I love and miss her. And when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. That's it. Jason will now share his, uh, what he wrote about grandma. Yeah. So I'm just going to read it. Um, it's been hard to explain what the depth of losing grandma has been like to my friends and community. It's a deep loss. Grandparents pass away, it's to be expected. So people express their sympathy and then move on. But after thinking about it, their casual sympathy is to be expected because most people's grandmothers are not like Grandma Gladys. She was truly grand. Alongside of my wife, my parents and brother, nobody has shown me more love than grandma. This is easily exemplified in her presence at every single band concert, athletic competition, school play, film screening, or anything else I was even remotely involved in. What's more is I think that she genuinely enjoyed all of these. While I find myself, even at my own brother's elementary school band concert, cringing at the sixth graders playing hot cross buns out of tune, Grandma's love for me, some, oh, I can't Sorry. read, what are you doing? I was just putting it on the, Sorry for the recording. Oh. Okay. Uh, sorry. So you thrown off back. <laughs> sorry. Uh, here we go. Well, I'd find myself even at my brother's elementary school band concert, cringing even at the sixth graders playing hot cross buns out of tune. Grandmom's love for me somehow made her tone deaf at my own concerts. All she heard was the first chair clarinetist of the New York Philharmonic. I was trying to think of a special memory from childhood. Mem many of my friends have a special outing that they did once with one of their grandparents that's always stuck with them or a specific tradition. And I don't really think I have a specific memory or thing that was just ours, but this isn't a bad thing. 
it didn't mean that we were not close. In fact, it was the opposite. Spending time with grandma was effortless mm -hmm. and so enjoyable. I didn't have to fight for her attention. I just had it. With Pop-Up, we got to go to breakfast together at Smitty's on Sundays. That was when I got to spend time with Pop-Up. But with Grandma, it felt like she was always around, always spending time with me, always the grandma everyone hoped to have. Mm -hmm. Later in my life, especially on her visits to Chicago and on my visits back home, we did get those special memories. In Chicago, I loved how she connected with my friends like they were her own. We woke up together at 6 a.m. to go see my friend Hannah swim at her triathlon. Grandma had never met Hannah, but she cheered for her the loudest. And when Hannah got out of the freezing water, Grandma hugged Hannah, still in her soaking wetsuit. She was roomies with some of the girls during our wedding. Some of my friends put her up. They always remembered her and were so sad to hear about her passing. In Chicago, we went on all sorts of adventures together. She'd hang out with me and my friends. She didn't want to go shopping or do the things I'm sure she'd love to do when she normally traveled. She just wanted to be in my life, just as it was. On my visits home, I looked forward to having breakfast with her. We chatted and gossiped like old friends and always fought over who was paying. I don't think I ever heard her complain. Even her, at his, as her body was aging, she always said, I'm blessed, some people have it worse than me. What a blessing to know her for 33 years. I miss my grandma, my friend. It's hard to convey. Words don't do it justice. I love you, grandma. Tell pop up hello. Okay, it's my turn now. <laughs> um, so I had never had a grandma like Gladys. When I first met the Gerber family, she was the person I gravitated towards the most. She instantly made me feel like family and I loved every story she shared with me. I had never had a grandparent visit me in Chicago or get to see my independent life as an adult. So the visits that she took to Chicago to see us were very, very special to me as well. I always remember how we brought her to our friend's triathlon and how hard she cheered mm -hmm. and how um or how she brought her own toilet paper <laughs> because she was worried that she was going to use all of ours <laughs> <laughs> and i'll never forget the look in her eyes when we took her to margie's candies and a 12 inch sundae was put down before her with three massive scoops of ice cream <laughs> or how hilariously freaked out she was by our cat elda who would sit on the coffee table and watch her sleep every night. <laughs> um, she was also far more bold than any grandparent I had ever had, like buying a Victoria's Secret gift card for me at my bridal shower, or telling me about how when she first met Pop Pop, she quote, wanted to jump him. <laughs> the, things, <laughs> the things I miss the most about her um, is, will be our breakfast outings that we take every time we visit or how'd she snuggle up next to you on the couch. Um, she never shied away from being close, which was really meaningful to me. I miss her oy vays and her love ya honeys and how easy it was to talk to her. She had a spice for life that brought me so much joy every time um, I talked to her and she always made me feel cherished as a person. Even though she was a grandmom, she was also a really sweet friend and I miss her dearly. I love you, grandmom. Okay. Um, Megan, would you recite the serenity prayer for us? The serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he, as he did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make it all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably, and reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next Amen. 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 Dad, you have um, something that you would like to share about mom and a thank you to Robert. Uh, this is a thank you to Robert. When Robert came in to take care of mom, 
the last week while she was still with us. He did not know how different it would be from his prior visit. There were a lot of changes that week. And although unprepared and untrained like the rest of us, He stepped up and did what was necessary for mom's care. Robert, I cannot thank you enough for being there mom's last week. It made a difference to me, and I know it made a difference to mom. I'm so grateful to have you as my brother. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to read something about mom. Hopefully I can get through it. Not all there. I wanted to let you know about my mom's life the last few years while she was still well. She was very active and had a daily and weekly routine. As Beth had me add to her obituary, she was a friend to all that knew her. She was ready every Sunday to attend Highlands Church with Robin and I. She started to attend after dad passed in December 2007. She was usually sweeping the driveway when we would pull up to her house to pick her up. She loved to participate in the worship service and would frequently mention how beautiful the music and songs were. Mom made a public declaration of faith in Yeshua, the Messiah, at a Messianic Passover Seder on March 24, 2016. And as a side note, Robin and I were there and Matthew and Sarah were there. She walked her dog, Lucy, every morning throughout her neighborhood. If there was even a hint of rain, she would carry an umbrella with her. The neighbors next to and across from her, as well as neighbors up and around the block, all knew her by name. She knew all about the lives of many of them. She rode her exercise bike regularly almost every day. She spent much of her free time reading and she kept a log of all the books she read going back years so as not to repeat them. She had her favorite TV shows and rarely missed them. <clears throat> Mom went to the VA cemetery every Saturday morning to visit Dad's grave. Her custom was to bring Dad up to date on the week's events, leave flowers, and place a stone on top of the marker to signify someone was there that week. I would ask how dad was, and she would reply, he was quiet this week. She would make her trips to the grocery and dollar stores. The clerks all knew her by name, and she got to know about their lives. Everyone loved her signature colored hair crystals that she always had on. She attended a weeknight small group Bible study every week. She did not drive at night, so people considered it a privilege to pick her up. Her group had a potluck before the study, and she always brought the same thing, Albertson's chocolate cake, which was missed on those occasional weeks she could not attend. Mom was beloved by the members of this group. She attended a Tuesday morning women's Bible study at Scottsdale Bible Church every week. She sat at the same table with the same ladies each week. Like everyone else, they loved her. The number of cards and notes that came in from them while she was ill and could not attend was wonderful. The notes and cards from them that came to our family after she passed was unexpected and cherished. Mom was a meticulous filer she filed notes from her evening small group Bible study and her Tuesday women's study. I also discovered there was a file on each child, child-in-law, and grandchild containing greeting cards received, school programs, college commitments, and other assorted memories. She also had all the birthday, sympathy, get well cards she had received going years back. Whenever I would pick her up at the airport after she returned from visiting Robert and Beth's in California, she would always want to go for lunch or breakfast. She would never let me pay. She regularly had weekly lunch with her friend Nancy at Village Inn and always ordered the same meal. Even the wait staff knew her. She would visit her friend Lynn at either of their homes 
or meet for a meal on a regular basis. Mom enjoyed going to the senior community center once a week for bingo and lunch. She always commented on how generous the lunch was for such a low cost. Mom loved birthdays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Her birthday is around Thanksgiving, so it was always a special time for her. As her routine changed and she became ill, she always wanted to go to lunch after her doctor's appointments or tests. She was an encouragement to all who crossed her path. It was something to watch people open up to her. Sitting in the oncologist's office, she would turn to me and mention all the younger women with head scarves and knowing that she had an incurable illness, tell me others must have it worse than her. I loved my mom. She was the best of us. She really was. <laughs> um, Sarah Grace, would you read the letter from dad's, um, from pop-up service from Rabbi Bonnie? Rabbi Bonnie was the VA chaplain in 2007 and grew very fond of Len and Gladys. As a chaplain at the VA hospital, I'm sure it's a no-no to play favorites. I'm writing to confess that I did. Mr. Kessler and his beyond charming wife Gladys were always a highlight on my visits. With his trademark Marine Corps cap jauntily perched on his head and a ready smile, I often found that I would save my stop in the room for last so that I had something to look forward to. Mr. and Mrs. Kessler was always warm and wise, concerned about my family and me. Their down-to-earth advice and caring for their own family were an inspiration. When my home was burglarized last spring, Mr. Kessler was right there with advice about managing the insurance claim. When I took on a position teaching high school this fall, I had to deal with many challenges teenagers offer. Mrs. Kessler and I reversed roles as she provided me with a steady stream of pastoral support. Her devotion to her sweet husband was the stuff of legends. Okay, um, Robert, do you have any other memories that you would like to share about your mom? Um, so before I do that, I want to return a favor to Howard and Robin. And just their support of mom over the years was incredible. Um, I, I think I could have rose to the level that they did, um, you know, but I, I just really appreciated everything they did to make sure she was taken care of. She was comfortable. Um, you know, she had everything she needed. It, it was just amazing. You know, um, I, I think that, um, we were raised right. <laughs> I'll put it that way. All right. Um, to me, mom was an amazing woman. Um, she was always an optimist and always was able to rise above her challenges. She ensured that her family was always safe and well taken care of. Um, she saw the best in everyone provided the support needed to achieve our dreams. I appreciate her every day for giving me the confidence to live a life that is blessed with hope, achievement, and love. I will miss her physical presence, but she will always be with me in my heart. What I wanna say is um, mom was trained by another mom, grandmom, who was amazing. Um, I think mom took it to another level. Um, you know, um, well, Jason met our, our grandmother. Um, I don't remember if Matthew did or not. Um, but, you know, my grandmother, to me, is how you see your, your grandmother. Um, and, you know, and Mom's father was the same. They were just amazing. Um, you know, I, I think that in our lives, um, Howard and I live with our grandparents. Let's see, one, two, it was like at least three times we went back. And for me, I, I don't know about Howard, but for me, my grandparents were as much my parents as my mom was. Um, and that's really special. Um, 
you know, uh, I think Jason, you mentioned about grandmom and events and how she always could pick you out. Um, there was one year in high school I was in the choir and I, I don't have a very good voice, so I don't know why I was in the choir, but I was. And, I, you know, she did the same thing. She, oh, I heard you. You were wonderful. You know, and I was like, how did you hear me out of everybody? Because I was trying to be as silent as possible. <laughs> um, so, you know, that was, and, um, you know, Matthew, you mentioned about grandma losing it. Um, believe me, uh, uh, Howard and I ha have ha have those experiences. <laughs> There's, you know, e everybody gets to a level where they they need to they don't they're not on their best behavior. Um, you know, and Sam Sam mentioning the visits to Phoenix. Um, you know, just reminds me of the of the times you know where we would come and. Every meal was a production and was just outlandish. <laughs> there was a dirt dessert for everyone. There was a special drink for everyone. You know, it was just amazing the the table that she set. Sodas in the middle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was, um, and then you know, Megan mentioned about presents. Um, you know, Beth and I always tell the story. At least many holidays where we didn't have to buy gifts for our kids because grandmom provided more, way more than enough. Um, well, I should say toys gifts. We did the essential stuff that they needed. Um, and so that, that's just the kind of person she was. You know, for me, um, you know, she, I think she was my biggest fan. Um, I just felt like from her, I could do anything and, and and be successful because of the support and confidence she gave me. And I really appreciate it and love that really much. Thank you. Um, so now, uh, Mom, you uh, have a selection of condolences to read for us. All right. Um, well, I'm going to read, um, Howard mentioned in his that we received so many cards and letters and um, I just couldn't read them all. So I picked a few, I typed them up, and I'm gonna read what some of these women wrote, and people wrote uh, uh, about mom. This one's from a woman named Danny. One of the most positive, joyful people I have ever known. Always a big, beautiful smile on her face and something positive to say always. I was blessed to know Gladys, she will be greatly missed. Um, from Kathy wrote, Gladys was so loving to Jim and I, whether at church or in the hospital, she always had a beautiful smile and a hug to share. See you in heaven, Gladys. This one's from a woman named Libby. She was one of the ladies at her Tuesday Bible study. What a blessing your mother has been to so many. What a joy. Memories of her will be held so dear. It is such a comfort to know she is at peace with the Lord. This also is from a lady from um, the Bible study, Mimi. Blessings to you in honoring your mother. I truly miss her. Gladys was such an inspiration to me. Her smile still shines in my heart. This one also came from Mimi. Um, she sent us, that was from the obituary online. This one's from a card. I am so sorry for the loss of your mother. Gladys was an amazing woman. I met her through Kathy's Bible study at Scottsdale Bible. I would meet her in the parking lot before class to walk her in and after class to walk her out. They knew that she was a little shaky. She looked so stylish in her classy car, as she called it. She told me that she didn't know how to make the top go down. Not once she had ever had it down. She told me how her sons took care of her and were so good to her. She loved you so much. She was so concerned when Robin had a bad fall. I constantly told Gladys what an inspiration she was to me. She always said she had a good life and was so thankful for everything. I will miss seeing her beautiful smile, her twinkling eyes, her stylish hair, but mostly her charm and love. It was my honor to know her. This one came from a woman named Connie. These were all the ladies she, she sat with at the Bible study. Gladys sat right next to me at every class that Kathy Wilson presented. 
She always looked radiant and well-groomed with a clip of pearls in her hair to match her outfit to accent her gorgeous hairstyle. Her demeanor was sweet, full of love and good humor. I can still hear her laughter and her genuine smile. Her faith was large and so was the love she had for her family. She spoke of you often, telling us of your love and attention and protection over her. Gladys is truly missed, but is now alive like never before in his loving presence. With love and gratitude for your remarkable mom, Connie. From Lexi, she wrote, Gladys was the sweetest, happiest, and most optimistic, optimistic person I've ever met. Her beautiful smile and laughter were contagious. I love hearing the stories she shared of her childhood and family. Her family was her joy, and she felt so loved and blessed for all you did for her throughout her life. Gladys is so missed at our table, but we rejoice knowing she is resting in the presence of Jesus and that one day we will see her again and then forever from Lexi. And last, I'm going to read from Cousin Lynn. Yesterday, I received sad news that my Aunt Gladys Kessler passed away at age 86. She was a wonderful woman who lived her life to the fullest. She would say things like, it is what it is, and if it was meant to be, it's meant to be. She was a very optimistic person and always had a positive attitude. She always pictured me as little Lynn, the little girl who would sit on her lap, even when I was a grown woman with a child of my own. Even though she lived in Arizona, I always made a point to go and visit her and Uncle Lenny. I even went to undergrad at the University of Arizona, which was out there. After Brett was born, we went to visit Brett. We went to visit. Brett had a wonderful relationship with her, and I'm so thankful for that. We loved her very much, and she will be greatly missed. All of my friends who met her thought she was an awesome lady, and even as she aged, she still looked great. Love and miss you, Aunt Gladys. Rest in peace. Oh, Thank you. Okay, um, now, Beth, uh, it's your time <laughs> to share. <laughs> okay, so it's hard for me to, like, read something, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so it's hard for me to put into words what Gladys meant to me, and it probably isn't by accident that I never called her mom, even though she treated me as her own from the very first day that we met. And as a side note, I don't call my mom mom either, so, you know, there you go. She was certainly another mom to me, but she carved out a different and more special place in my heart. A mother is someone who raises you, keeps you safe, teaches you about life, and holds you in her, in your, her fold for your lifetime. Gladys was a wonderful mother and grandmother to us all, but I like to think of our relationship as something different. We spent hours discussing diets, books, movings, exchanging good-hearted gossip and secrets. And when we were in, together in California, which I've certainly heard from all of you, I thought my experience was unique and now I know it really wasn't, but she fully participated in my life. And uh, whether that would be like walking and having coffee with my friends, with the dog, you know, going for lunch, going to being incorporated into our big family swim parties and barbecues, uh, she was right there with me. We cooked together, we planned events, we went to movies, we drank wine, and we played rounds and rounds of cards. Mm -hmm. I always say, especially those, you know, after Lenny died and we would bring her in quite a few times a year. And we, sometimes I think that we brought her in just to play cards with us because she would arrive home from the airport and we'd be like, all right, sit down. Let's get our game of cards in and then we can go and have a meal. Um, and although all these and throughout all of these slices of life, there was a lot of hilarity. I was just thinking about this time last year, I was helping her through a medical procedure. I just came out for a week. Actually, it was a colonoscopy and drinking the liquid before that night was hysterical in its own right. But uh, the next day, and she wasn't doing very well, um, as we all know, but uh, we ran around town because she was determined to buy a specific candy. I think that Robin liked <laughs> that she wanted to make sure <laughs> that she had in her house. But uh, we, you know, drove around and we um, stopped at a market and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to put her in one of those motorized um, 
shopping cart and you know she ran into a display table and we you know laughed hysterically and you know I was thinking to myself what am I doing taking this you know this woman through um you know rain and all of that and we had lunch at um at uh the village inn that you mentioned and I think that was one of her just heartiest meals I mean she had that procedure and there was it was all clear it came out great and mentally she was in a good place and she ate you know an omelet a crepe and all of this stuff in this restaurant that I think it closed the next week because there was a bucket uh, empty um, tiles on the roof and a bucket with a wire coming down and you know it was like a health hazard but you know, we just, we laughed and, and through all, it all, we were always, I felt always kind of getting on the edge of trouble. And we would always say, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone that we did this. Um, but although we didn't live close by, we shared so much of life. And I feel that she was always there for the big things. Uh, she was with us for every birthday. I mean, she came out in October and came out in July for Megan and Sam and Robert. And, uh, you know, everyone, of, well, not everyone, but, you know, uh, quite a few of Megan's gymnastics events, lots of soccer games, lots of baseball games, um, you know, plays in the summer that Megan was in. And she was like fully engaged and fully participative in our life. And my memories of Winch Crumb Drive with Gladys and Lenny and Shockey, you know, are a bedrock for my life. And, um, you know, I feel like I got lucky, but I think we all got lucky. And, you know, this is a celebration of someone who made us, who made that luck happen through her acceptance and her unconditional life and her full, her unconditional love and her full participation in all of our lives. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanna share a bit about the Gladys I knew. So um, the first thing I noticed about Gladys during that time was, I mean, her beauty was the first thing you would notice. But the other thing that I noticed was what a sweet woman on the inside she was. I also got to know of her faith and how deep her faith that God watched over her always. Gladys had had quite a few bouts with illness, and while she was ill, she always knew that God was watching over her. She would tell me that God had watched over her ever since she was a little girl, and that he watched over her then, and he's still watching over her today. So Gladys was a positive woman, and so I really appreciated that about Gladys. And then the other thing about Gladys is I found that she never had met a stranger. She would share with me this time that she would go to the grocery store and she'd walk out of there and someone would come by and say, can I help you with your groceries? And you know, people wanted to help Gladys. And then one time when she came out of the grocery store, she couldn't find her car. And there was a kind gentleman that walked around the parking lot with her until she found her car. And then the other time that stands out in my mind is when she went to the dollar store to pick up some little gift for someone. And she met a woman that was in there at the counter and they started chatting. They switched phone numbers and they started being friends from that time forward. So Gladys never was not fellowshipping and loving on people. So I am glad that Gladys is no longer in pain and I'm so thankful that she was able to be my friend and to show me what it's like to have a spirit of God within. I have known Aunt Gladys my entire life. And I was very fortunate that I was able to go to Arizona and visit her while Brett was growing up. One of the things that I remember most is that we all went to the Phoenix um, Diamondbacks game. And it was my friends from college and our kids and Aunt Gladys and we had the option to run the bases. So the kids were gonna run the bases. And when she found out about it, she's like, they can run the base? And I said, yeah. And, and she's like, 
I want to do that. So I said, go for it. And sure enough, she ran the bases with the kids. Of course she walked, but she did run, she did go around the bases and uh, I really think she enjoyed herself. She will be very missed and I love her very much. I loved playing cards with Aunt Gladys. I love and miss her very much. Gladys just uh, was such a very special person. After her passing, it was interesting, I ran across a memories page that had been put on the internet. And uh, the notice was there with her 1951 graduation picture and a note that saying, Glad's friendly smile and sweet disposition has earned her many friends. Well, that was no surprise because Gladys's trademark was that wonderful smile that she always had. And uh, I tend to think that maybe she actually was born with that smile. But every time we visited, it, she was just a joyful person, no matter what the circumstance. And uh, so that was such a delightful memory. There are people that enter our lives and they come and then they go. And uh, and so they're, they're, they're kind of forgotten unless we really put an effort. But Gladys was a person that just never has left my heart. I met Gladys at the senior center, and I said to her, come over and sit with me. She was dressed to the nines. If she had a blue sparkle in her hair, she had a blue outfit on, a blue shoes, and blue purse. She was just delightful, and when my husband was in the hospital in Tucson, we went out, and she had to go for breakfast at Village Inn. She knew the waitress. And for dessert, she had to have a strawberry crepe, no matter what. And we went out for lunches. We went out for dinner. You know, we we just had a really great time. And uh, I miss her. And the senior center, she would always bring a nasha rye, like candies or cookies. And she played bingo. And then we'd sit and we'd talk. And uh, she was just delightful. And then she was known for her chocolate cake to bring on Wednesday nights to the church gathering. Gladys was the chocolate cake lady. <laughs> Uh, but she was just delightful. We just had a really good time. When I went to visit her, she always had a nosh, a drink. But she was a wonderful lady. Sparkle, I used to call her Sparkle Plenty. We, uh, we so deeply appreciated Gladys. Mm -hmm. She was uh, a remarkable woman. We, uh, we constantly prayed for her, obviously, for her faith. She uh, was a lady who embraced her Jewish heritage but questioned what was it like to follow Christ and why did she need to do that? And so her questions when we were with her small group were just really unique and really fun to answer as she questioned why. Why would God do what he did? And so uh, over the years, we got to witness her slowly embracing what Jesus did for her. I remember going to church right after um, a Seder service that she had gone to, and she was so excited to tell us, or me, that now she knew Jesus as her Savior, and, and we were thrilled because that's the reason we're here. And we loved her. I loved her hugs. She was one of the sweetest, beautiful ladies that I've ever met. Yeah, and for me, it was always this touch of class mm -hmm. with this warm, wonderful personality that said, hey, value your friendship. Yeah. So we valued her so very, very much and are so pleased to know where she's at today in heaven with Jesus. And that we'll get to see her someday. Gladys was my friend. I met Gladys at a Bible study that I taught several years ago at a local condo complex. Gladys' Jewish friend invited her to the Bible study, and Gladys and I immediately bonded. She filled me in on all the Bible studies that she was attending through Highlands Church, which she loved. She thoroughly enjoyed the studies and all her friends who gathered with her for nine years. And she read her Bible the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, and the New Testament. And Gladys and I talked a lot about Jesus, and she shared her challenges that she had about placing her trust in Jesus, and we listened to each other. Howard, Robin, Matt, and Sarah, 
and Gladys attended a Passover Seder that I presented on March 24th of 2016. And following the Seder, as people were visiting with each other, Howard approached me and said, my mom told me that if you come to our table, she'll pray with you. That evening, March 24th, 2016, <sighs> surrounded by her family locally and her grandson, Jason, supporting her in Chicago and waiting to hear how his grandmother would respond, Gladys placed her trust in Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, and she received forgiveness of her sin and the promise of eternal life with God. Gladys then attended another Bible study that I was teaching as a Jewish believer. She attended as a Jewish believer. She'll always be Jewish. And the ladies who surrounded her at that table loved on her. What an eternal hope. God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has given us. And what a grand reunion we will enjoy with our dear Gladys when we see her face to face in heaven, when we see Jesus face to face in heaven. We'll see you soon, Gladys. I think this was wonderful. I'm so grateful that we were all able to get together to do this. Um, she was a wonderful lady. and. We'll continue to remember her and talk about her for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to, just to kind of close out this more formal time of sharing, um, I thought I could just close in a prayer. Um, I just Thank feel you. like a prayer is, is kind of a nice way to, you know, wrap up everything and, and kind of say like an end of, of a yeah, time. Nice. And then, you know, there's no rush to, to leave afterwards. Um, we'll just close out this more formal time of sharing. And then if you all want to stay and hang out, we can. So, all right. So I'll just say a prayer now for us. Lord God, we thank you so much for Gladys, for the woman that you made her to be, for the woman that she was in each of our lives um, for the mother that she was to us, the grandmother um, to us, the friend to us, God, we are so thankful that we got to uh, be in her life and that she got to be a part of our lives as well. I just ask that the legacy that she has left behind would be just engraved in all of our hearts, the joy that she shared with each of us, the lessons that she taught each of us, the memories that we shared together, that you would solidify those things in our hearts, um, that even in, in the quiet moments when we need um, just a reminder of that joy, that those memories and those lessons learned would come back to us in the moments where we need them. And that in those moments, we would be able to remember um, our sweet Gladys and to truly be glad and thankful for her, God. Um, I just thank you so much um, personally for the, the person that she was to me and um, how she brought me into this family in her own way. Um, and I thank you just for how she has blessed every single person here and all the people who um, are not on this Zoom but will watch later and um, remember how she touched them in their lives, Lord. We just thank you for this time of sharing and this time of, of commemorating her life. And we're so grateful for her. Um, pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.